today's reflection comes from Matthew chapter 23, verse 1 to 13. Today is March 15, 2022. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent heart and steadfast faith, to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus' message in Matthew chapter 23 is similar to the prophets who went before him. One example is in Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. This reference is Jesus' response to criticism that he eats with tax collectors and sinners. Jesus answers, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. However, Jesus suggests that keeping the law without exercising mercy does not fulfill God's expectations. Jesus says, interpretation of the law underscores that humans are on a level playing field. God extends mercy to all, including the tax collectors and the sinners. The one who seeks attention and status through God's law misinterprets it. The attitude of a servant is more appropriate, for the servant shapes their actions according to the will of their master. Here, Jesus shows us a master whose expectations are high, but they are guided first and foremost by mercy. The horrible, heartbreaking failures of the early church does not stop the spirit from continuing to move and spread the good news that the blind see and the lame walk for nearly 2,000 years. Our current heartbreaking failures cannot stop the grace of Jesus Christ from continuing to move in us and between us because the main character of our scripture is God. It is not even Peter with his fantastic preaching or it is not Paul even with his radical missionary work. It is God. And so the good news is Christ cannot be stopped by our sin and our failures, whether they are sins that are individual or communal. No, we are not so different from the scribes and Pharisees. Of course, the problem actually goes much deeper than what we wear or what we are called. Phylacteries and fringes, vestments and titles all have their place when kept in perspective. Jesus' concern then and now is the way those things get out of perspective, the way our motivations for doing them become distorted so that they become an end in themselves, the way they become substitute for what we really are about, glorifying God and living as disciples. The good news is that we are all welcome in our messiness and diversity. Today, we look at the church and see her brokenness. She is and we are the bride of Christ. Jesus is not done with us. Even when we feel like the church is done with us or we feel like we are done with the church. He is at work in the church, transforming it today and moving us towards new and richer experience of his mercy. This is us. This is the church. One body, different parts. While we mourn the pain the church has caused us and others, here we are again, through Christ and in the Spirit, creating a place for others and ourselves that we can serve and love in all our beautiful messiness. We look back in order to go forward. In between, we practice the pause. The coronavirus, the explosive eruption of La Sofre, tests where we go back to 
and therefore what we pull out of our storehouses, while at the same time, it challenges us to go forward with a blended creativity that proclaims Jesus as the Messiah and we servants of Christ in all our beautiful messiness. Continue to have a wonderful Lent as God's grace abide with us. Amen.